After Joseph and his brothers died, the population of Israelites living in Egypt exploded. It grew so large that the new Pharaoh was fearful that they would form an army against Egypt. So he made the Israelites slaves, forcing them to make bricks all day long. Then Pharaoh took it a step further. He issued a ruling that all newborn Hebrew boys should be killed. Soon after that, an Israelite woman gave birth to a son. Fearful he would be killed, she put him in a basket and placed him in the Nile River. The basket floated downstream and was found by Pharaoh's daughter. She raised the boy in Pharaoh's palace as if he were her own child. She named him Moses. Years later, Moses saw an Egyptian beating an Israelite slave. Moses became angry and murdered the Egyptian. Fearing for his own life, Moses fled into the wilderness where he became a shepherd. One day while he was tending his flock, he saw something incredible. A bush that was engulfed in flames, but was not burning up. Then Moses heard God's voice coming from the bush. God had seen the suffering of the Israelites and wanted Moses to lead the people out of Egypt. So Moses went back to Egypt and met with Pharaoh. He asked that the Israelites be given a short break from their labor to hold a festival to worship God. Pharaoh not only denied the request, but made the Israelites work even more difficult to punish them. But this was just the beginning. To prove that God was on Israel's side, God brought great disasters called plagues on Egypt. God made all the water of Egypt turn into blood, filled the land with frogs and insects, sent diseases to kill the Egyptian animals, gave the people terrible sores, and brought terrible thunderstorms and terrifying darkness. Then God sent one final plague. God protected the Israelites by giving instructions to each family to take a perfect sheep, sacrifice it, and put its blood on the door frames of their houses. The Israelites did what God commanded. At midnight, God moved throughout Egypt, and every firstborn son, including Pharaoh's, were killed. But God passed over every house that had blood on its door frame. Pharaoh was so overwhelmed that he practically begged the Israelites to leave. So in the middle of the night, after living there for 430 years, the Israelites left Egypt. However, Pharaoh once again changed his mind and sent his armies after the Israelites. They chased them for miles until finally they trapped the Israelites at the edge of the Red Sea. But God instructed Moses to strike the water with his walking stick. When he did, a strong wind blew across the sea, creating dry land for the Israelites to walk across. After they reached the other side, God caused the water to crash back down, drowning all of the Egyptians who were following close behind. The Israelites journeyed far away from Egypt. Along the way, God took care of them, giving them quail in the evenings and flaky bread called manna in the mornings. Many times the Israelites complained about their living conditions, but Moses would remind them of God's goodness and continue to lead them toward the land God had promised them.